What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to my channel. We are at Fuel Fest in West Palm Beach. We have Andrew here from Salvage to Savage. I met you guys at SEMA. Yes, you Love did. what you guys do, but when I saw this, I yeah. was so excited because this is a truck that I wanted to feature. And now we're here, I get to see it, and uh, now we're gonna do a walk around on it. Can yeah. you uh, kind of fill me in on the story behind this truck? Sure, yeah, so this is a 1965 Chevy C10. This truck was built kind of in the beginning of COVID. Uh, and it was a project that got purchased, half built from a father and son. We took it as like a bare shell and made it into this in about, uh, what was it, about a year and a half, I'd say. So this is a customer car? No, well, this is actually a shop vehicle. Oh, okay. It's owned by the shop owner, Mike, which is, he's, he's hanging out over hey here. Hi. So it, it fit our, our theme, Salvage to Savage, and uh, it, it was like a rolling shell, half complete, and this is it here. So this is, Nice. I mean, right off the bat, just looking from the outside, uh, the patina that you guys preserved here yeah. is incredible. Well, it's actually a very handcrafted patina. So this is all uh, hand done. This isn't actually uh, like full patina just from being weathered out in the, in the field or, or something like that. It was actually a primered truck. We went ahead and put multiple layers of paint on it. Actually, Mike himself, he's kind of a, an artist paint savant <laughs> so like but, uh, some, some of this is natural right uh, is this? I, none, none of it no none of really it. No. none of it i i basically pay, played with some paint man and i came up with this color scheme and went with it. this truck was full primer and bare metal when i got it huh. it was in pieces but like this is that that is handmade that's oh really made. yeah wow so t timmy fabricated the the shell so this is all handmade right i couldn't find one in online that i liked so we made this, this was just steel, and I used uh, salt, water, and vinegar. I laid a towel on it for a few hours in the sun, and that's what came out. Huh. It's pretty cool. It's, it's cool because you spend all this time on this build, and you can drive it, and it can get rock chips, and it's fine. Oh yeah, no, that's my favorite thing about it, right? We, we've said before, we, we're, on, we're at car shows, and we're all sitting here eating chili dogs and slobbering chili all over, and it doesn't bother you. Yeah. It's the best. Awesome. Pulling it on a trailer, you scratch it, you don't care. Very yeah. cool. Um, all right, so let's do a walk around on yeah. the, the rest of the body here. So all this uh, yeah. all nice handmade pinstripe. patina. The, the tail lamps are actually interior house uh, lamps. These are the lamps from Your interior. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, I love. Yep. I like that it fits. You. And then you have modern LEDs. Yeah, safety a first. Classic New York uh, license plate. This is actually from. Mikey's hometown. The the frame is um, it has a porter built uh, front and rear drop member. So that's a C notch that goes over our nine inch rear end. So this is all custom fabricated back here. So these are really just beauty panels to hide all that framework. So if you see that tubular framework, that's bronze right there. That's the frame. And this is super clean though because a lot of builds they leave it open, right. and then that way you can see the rear end right. and all that. But maybe this truck. It doesn't really fit that theme, right? So well, that's why we wanted we wanted to kind of. I mean, it, it, listen, it, this framework is beautiful, and it's not that we're trying to hide it. And that's kind of why we did this perforated metal. So at nighttime, there's a very vague LED light that's inside of there, which glows. Uh, so when Andrew's ripping burnouts in this thing, the smoke that comes out of here is glowing blue. So it's pretty cool. That's super cool. Yeah. And then uh, the fuel tank is. Yeah. Right so there's yeah our fuel tanks here. This is like an old Ford Shelby. Um, lid and then our, our battery box and compressors and the airlift unit are all inside of that little cubby i love this so much this is super clean so it closes and you know it kind of fades away tell me about this wood so the wood is is reclaimed i i, I collect wood salvage of savage actually started way before i got into the automotive industry just from taking old construction materials and um, like driftwood and making lighting and stuff so this is wood that I salvaged, and, and actually these metal strips are, are made for transitions on roofing uh, curbs for like AC units. So those really don't belong with a truck either. This is super cool. I love this so much. I, I found that and it was, it was really ratty looking. And I said, one day I'm gonna use it for something and it worked out perfect for this. So we so, polished it up and- And it's actually like structural, like it actually holds air. Yeah, no, that is the air tank for the, for the air ride system. But, but it wasn't modified in any way to- Oh yeah, no, of course. I mean, I mean because the, we had to, you know, a typical keg has a, yeah. a, a spout here. 
So I, I welded this closeout panel, and then, and then we, um, we welded in the, the bosses on the bottom. And these are actually the supply lines. These are airlines going to the, uh, to the air management system. And it's the actual mount. Stand, yeah, it, Stand. It's, a, it's a mount and, and the airlines. So yeah, we had to we had to get a little tricky when we were designing that. That is super cool. I I just love that so much. And you know, I love what you guys do because, unfortunately, so many cars now they're lease cars. You know, you you have them, you buy them, and then there's someone else's problem, and then they get crushed or whatever, right? But you repurposing other things also to keep these on the road, like this could have been. Uh, headed for the junkyard. It, wa it was. It was. <laughs> it and then was. You, you're like doing God's work by bringing it out onto the street. Yeah. No, when I when I get my mind stuck on something like that keg, for instance, like you, could, there was nothing that would have stopped me from making that the air tank. Yeah. So whatever it takes, man. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, it looks great when it's all polished like Very that. Cool. Yeah. So this tell thing. me about the what what is left that's stock on here. Well, this is that uh, this is all stock, stock grill, stock bumper, um, no modifications done to that at all. Uh-huh, and th this, you just re it, all of this? No, no, I just bought uh, aftermarket stuff okay. from LMC. So that's that name, Cha-Ching? Cha-Ching, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know, have you seen the sign in our shop? No. So I got a, I demoed a, a bar restaurant and I got a 20-foot sign, a vintage, like, you know, with the light, a marquee sign, and it says Cha-Ching. So I got that sign, I brought it to the shop, and Tim and I were trying to figure a name for the truck, and. I looked up and I said, you know what, cha-ching, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So do you ever run it with a hood on it? No, we took the hinges off and we hung the, the hood on the shop wall. We, and it's crazy too, because uh, in the beginning, my plan was to run it with the hood. Timmy was very deliberate that we were not. So I think he made this turbo system stick up just a little too high for the stock hood to fit. But then we, then we spent all that time modifying the hood to fit on the truck and we never used it. So all of this stuff you guys made in-house, this yes. uh, uh, tubbing and everything? Yeah, all this, all these closeout panels. So we brought that perforated metal look here. This is our intake for our turbo system. So, you know, these, all this perforated metal kind of ties in with the whole truck. It's cool. It, it, it does continue the theme, right? right. Yeah, very cool. Um, tell me about the motor setup. This is like so crazy. I don't even... I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Another LS swap. It's a LS1, so it started as a first gen LS, a 5.7 liter. It's been forged internally. So we've had all the work done at Mesa Engine Balancing in Miami. And then uh, the custom fabricated turbo system was built in house by our fabricator, Tim. All the manifolds, hot side piping, the intakes, the intercooler, all built in house by Tim has a nice Wagner uh, accessory drive kit on it, vibrant performance couplers. We used all the best of the best stuff yeah. that, that we could on this build. Our, our plan was to flex our muscles and be like, yo, if you guys want something exotic and cool as hell, salvage is savage, we got you. Have you guys had a chance to dyno this? We dynoed it in the very beginning stages and it was making, I believe, was it seven? Seven at the wheel on like seven pounds of boost, I think. So it's certainly got some way to go. Yeah, which is way more than this truck. Yeah, it's, it's all just I on mean, wastegate spring at the moment. It's so. probably like seven times the horsepower that this truck came with initially. Exactly. Yeah, well, we boxed in the whole frame. Everything's got some super like, our, our Watts link, what do we use? One inch chromoly and like a huge billet. Like, yeah, the truck's built for the power. It's beefy. Um, the whole chassis has been boxed in and, you know, big beefy rear, uh, rear end, so. It's ready for the for the power to come in. And in true Ford, Florida car fashion, you guys have air conditioning. That's it. Restomat AC unit in here. Looks it looks nice on the inside too. The the uh, their their billet um, vents, which I'll show you, they tied into this project really well. So that started a nice relationship with them as well. What what do people say when you they see you driving this down on? Well, it's street? bananas. It's, it's bananas. It's really cool, man. You you feel like you're like a, a superstar in this truck. <laughs> well, let's talk about the wheels because a lot of times when you build a truck like this, it may not look right with smaller tires, smaller low profile tires, but the wheel design that you guys chose, I feel like really fit the truck. The oh vehicle. yeah. I mean, wheels are, in my opinion, can make or break a build, right? I mean, they're like 25% of the project. So 
you know, we, I found these wheels and I came up with this color scheme. So right now, nobody else has this, so they're one off. The bronze is just, I felt like tied really in well with the patina work, 295 in the back. So it's got some meat, again, to, to get that horsepower down. Came out sweet, we got a, we're running a 20 up front and a 22 in the back. It actually, it just looks right. That, I mean, part of it is that there's a step right. going on, right? Chrome, if yeah. it was all the way to the edge bronze, maybe it may not look as right. right. Yeah. No, this, this combination right here with that polish and the bronze is my favorite. This might go too. That's we have it on the EV truck. That finish, that you know, that that color scheme, and we're we're running on another build right now. So, so, so you actually worked with Boston to, to build these yeah. custom. Yeah. 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 Uh, are they based out of Florida? They're in Miami. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's what I thought. There's. Yeah. The, this uh, this build with these wheels started a pretty good relationship with with us and Boston. Um, they made a killer video, which was like kind of like the first time people got to see this truck. And it, it went, you know, it went, it went bananas. I think it was like their most viewed video that they made. So um, yeah, it's cool. So we've used Boston on a couple of our projects. And behind that, I see you have some uh, big uh, Willwood pistons or, or uh, brake calipers. Yeah, what are those, six piston? Yeah, six piston front, four piston rear. Yeah. 14 and a half inch front rotor. And I think it's like a 12 inch rotor in the rear. And then Andrew installed a line lock on it so he could just sit there and roast the tires. I, I also noticed, do you have a handbrake in there? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Hold can, on, you'll like we, it. Can we talk like about the inside here? Okay. All right. Ah. There's so much going on. There's so many questions that I have for the inside. Um, like, even these. You guys made these? No, that's what I was telling you outside. Um, so when I was building this truck, that's when I, I discovered Restomont Air. Oh. So these are our air vents from Restomont. All, all I did, I, I have a problem, man. I can't, I can't not touch something. Even when I buy something that's cool, I have to do something different. So I, I disassembled it and I painted these satin black just to kind of give a little contrast in here with the, against the billet. I like the, the mix of old school um, OEM and also the newer yep. touches that you've done here. So that my, my, my motto in everything that I do is simplicity, but still, you know, that mechanical vibe. So that's kind of like, you know, this, this relocation shift knob. So most, you know, T56 has your point back here underneath the bench. Obviously important to keep a bench in a truck like this. So we, Timmy came up with this system to relocate the shift knob. Yeah, plus it would be almost impossible to shift. Very uncomfortable. Back, yeah. um, and on top of that, you have a e-brake, a Hoonigan one too. Yeah, we did that just to just to make Zach happy. Zach, Zach kind of fell in love with this truck as we were building it. And, uh, you know, he mentioned that he wanted us to come to Hoonigan's with it. So we threw this in there for good faith. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that is... And, and let me tell you, man, in the beginning, the, the brakes weren't working great in this truck. And uh, I had to use it a few times so I didn't hit somebody. <laughs> it actually is an e-brake. Oh, yeah, e -brake. no. Yeah. It, we haven't done any like true drifting with it, but Andrew did a one minute burnout at LS Fest and like, a, like an Australian style, just twisting it around. I'll have to send you that video. Yeah. No really problem. cool, man. Um, tell me about the interior here. I kind of stole this interior look out of a, a, a brand new Mercedes AMG had this style and I loved it. So it looks super clean. And clean again, th this brown ties in with that patina outside like perfectly. So where's the line lock? It, you know what? It's funny. It's right here mm -hmm. and it, it just broke. So oh, no. it, you hold the button down right here yeah. and it locks up the front brake and just. That's, okay. that's why you could just. Oh yeah, I think he got into like third gear doing a burnout at one point. It was insane. So what were you saying, the ignition? Oh yeah, the ignition yeah. is over here like a Porsche. Oh. Where was it traditionally, on the column? Yeah, uh, I think it was on one of these buttons. So th okay. there was buttons on this, um, maybe the headlights. I don't remember. There's all, oh no, it was, on, it was here. Mm -hmm. the, the key was up here. What a cool build, really good job. I love, I also love the fact that you guys use this. Oh yeah. yeah, I drive it all the time, I love it. I'll have to start it for you. Yeah, can you? Absolutely. I wanna hear this.
just is so wrong, but so, so right. So right. That that sound is coming from this truck. It's crazy, right? It, it makes, makes all the right noises and it throws all the right flames. Too, oh yeah. So. See the flames on this thing come up to here. <laughs> I love this too, the side exhaust. I had no idea. Like I, I remember um, when we were building this truck and I and I asked a couple of the guys like, what do you, what's it gonna sound like? You know, cause I've never had a turbo car. I've never had a LS motor. I'm, I'm a, I have big trucks, you know, I'm a, I was in construction. So they were like, it's, it's like nothing you've ever heard, right? And the first time this thing started, I mean like the goosebumps I got was nuts. And it's, you don't even have to floor it for to enjoy it, right? I mean, no, you know, it's so just, much fun just cruising. Yeah, when you're cruising and the turbos are just starting to spool, even in a in a in a, a higher gear, you know, once you're in like whatever fourth gear and you just kind of let it spool like a little bit. Yeah, and you hear that? Oh boy! Smiles for miles, that's Larry. Cool. Incredible. The spool and the D cell. Incredible. Well, thank you guys for showing us this and thank you so much for bringing it out for everyone to see yeah man um i cannot wait to see more of your builds and also i would love to visit your shop anytime day. larry yeah, awesome. yeah thank, thank you, you very much larry thank you so much later brother yeah thank you